Hello and welcome back to this damnful idealistic crusade. This video is a review of the 32nd of Republic's iconic cliffhanger serials. This, of course, is Captain America, which is the first Marvel film adaptation of a Marvel Comics character. But, of course, Republic was well known for taking uh, characters and licensing them and basically kind of doing their own thing with them, much to the dismay of the license holders. Uh, well, never was that more true than Captain America, because aside from the name Captain America being given to the lead character who wears the Captain America costume... That's the only thing this has to do with the with the actual character. We don't even have the shield, and it is debated among scholars, but very much obvious that the original plan was to adapt or work with a different character, and for whatever reason, the script was kept, and they just changed the name and decided to license Captain America instead. It seems that perhaps they were originally going to adapt the character of Mr. Scarlet, who was a Fawcett Comics character, but Fawcett Comics was tied up in the lawsuit that would be long running with uh, with DC and eventually led to Fawcett being sort of subsumed into DC. Uh, of course, Republic had previously done the masterpiece serial Adventures of Captain Marvel, which uh, while it was technically Captain Marvel was significantly altered, shall we say. Uh, so the serial Captain Marvel in, in its own right is a unique and fascinating legendary character, but very different from the comic original in most respects. But here in Captain in America, they basically just have a, a character. It is the district attorney, played by Dick Purcell, who unfortunately died shortly after the production of this serial. But he really throws himself into this role and is great uh, in, a, in a serial lead as a crusading district attorney by day who puts on a costume and goes around fighting crime and trying to stop the efforts of the mysterious Scarab, who is the uh, villain mastermind of this serial, by acting as Captain America. So again, he puts on the Captain America costume and everyone refers to him as Captain America, but that's the only thing it has to do with Marvel's character. So the, uh, this, this obviously will be something that uh, Marvel fans will have to get used to, especially if you've never seen a serial before. And especially uh, if you don't know how Republic could take characters and just kind of do whatever they wanted with them and just for the serial form. But this is a well-made serial. It is uh, credited as actually being Republic's most expensive serial to date. And it does, have the more, I guess, premium runtime because this does run for an extended 15 chapters, which they tended to do when it was a licensed character uh, or, or something that they had to pay a bit of money for so they knew there was already a built-in audience. Now, if you've seen my other serial reviews, I'm not as big on longer serials. I think with the Republic style, I think 12 chapters was really the sweet spot because uh, the more chapters you have, the more repetitive the action can get and you have to artificially kind of prolong the story in ways but other elements in this serial i think manage to overcome a lot of that and so while the serial itself if you were just looking at its story and the fact that it's 15 chapters might not seem like it was all that special the the real draw to this serial and what makes it deliciously entertaining is the fact that the scarab the main villain is played by lionel atwell who has a field day and of course me being a giant atwell fan especially from his classic horror films and his ability to just twirl the mustache with the best of the mustache twirling villains uh, i think he is one of the greatest screen villains of all time uh, across many different films but he also did work in serials a number of times and this may just be his best appearance in a serial he is deliciously evil one moment but then able to assume the cultured uh, heirs of a doctor at the museum as his public persona, which is really who he truly is, but uh, one can't help but notice the wonderful, wicked, uh, almost manic at times gleam come into the eyes when he starts plotting his schemes of villainy. So it's Atwell's presence that really drives this serial when he's on screen. Uh, there's even a moment where, in, in one of the later chapters, where he's having to torture someone for information and and 
you can easily see him being a great James Bond villain. I think it's a shame that he was not able to play a version of Le Chiffre in Casino Royale, for example. You see that sequence and you know uh, Atwell's uh, great villain roles, especially in classic horror films, and it just seems tailor-made for him. But unfortunately, he died long before Casino Royale was even first adapted for television in 1954. The plot of the serial revolves around the Scarab, or the Atwell uh, Doctor character, because this is one of the uh, Rare Republic serials where the villain is not a mystery villain. Usually we have to try and figure out who the actual masked villain is, and it's a sort of guessing game until the last two or three chapters. Well, here, this is more like Daredevils of the Red Circle, where we know who the villain is from the outset, and it's a really great notable actor who is one of the great iconic villains of cinema uh, playing the, the character, so that also helps to make that uh, much more striking and make up for the fact that we don't have a mystery villain to figure out for the serial so that does uh, remove some of the audience engagement factor especially for a longer serial but the scarab has been uh, committing various murders of, of men who are all tied to a former expedition where the Atwell character feels he was left out of the credit and share of the treasure and such that was uncovered on this uh, essentially sort of archaeological expedition and so in his sort of mad scheme of revenge He's killing off all of the uh, team members one at a time and leaving the trail of the scarab and has in invented or is trying to steal away various bits of technology, including uh, a wonderful uh, vibration ray device, which is capable of uh, reducing skyscrapers to just a pile of rubble. So there's a lot of fascinating elements in this serial, a lot of interesting cliffhangers. But the real thing that makes this serial work is the direction and you look at most serials, they're going to be directed by a team or of at least two, if not sometimes three directors, because the workload was so much that it had to be split between directors usually. Well, here it was split between Elmer Clifton, uh, who interestingly had a career dating back to the silent days, even working with Griffith, and for some reason or another wound up co-directing the serial. But the important name in terms of uh, serial credits is the co-director was John English, who is famously uh, half of of the greatest team of serial directors. He co-directed Captain Marvel and most of Republic's most legendary serials with William Whitney, who uh, myself and many others credit as sort of the father of the modern action sequence. And it is in particular the Whitney English Republic serials that pretty much everybody agrees is the pinnacle of the form. And they that, that was really where Republic was at its peak producing serials and and those uh, that, that that form a sort of canon of of the pinnacle of what the cliffhanger adventure action serial could be and where it really and truly was an art form. So to have half of the greatest serial directing team of all time on this serial only means that the energy, the intensity is there, the fight sequences here are phenomenal as they are in practically every Republic serial, but it is fitting that you have uh, John English here as co-director. So the fight sequences here are absolutely fantastic and you will find yourself marveling over them. Uh, everything is of course practical and done real for real and done on a a, a bit uh, bigger of a schedule and budget than Republic usually had, but still with, with the same sort of constraints of a Republic serial, and that always has to be kept in mind. Uh, even though this was Republic's most expensive serial, uh, there you do still have the, the common issues of serials in terms of uh, the each chapter does have to open with a recap of the previous chapter, and you have to be sure and not uh, cheat the audience in terms of resolving the cliffhanger. But usually the, the thing that people will find lacking, especially today, is that the character development is very much minimal. So you get the setup of the character, but uh, outside of that and knowing that he is a, a district attorney by day and Captain America when nobody's looking, you know, that's basically all you get. So the actual character lives and dies on the strength of the direction and the energy of the performance, which are both sensational. So it's the direction having that punch to it, which is essential for a serial, and the performances across the board having a nice energy that sustain the serial across the 15 chapters. So I do think this is a very good serial and manages to actually be better than certain serials that are still great from Republic that have 
shall we say, more interesting developments and characters or uh, plot hooks, but don't have the the same level of consistent quality in the direction or the villain performance. Because don't forget, this is Lionel Atwell's show, and when he shows back up, you're just the energy factor just goes into the stratosphere again, and he's just having a field day. I mean, he is just a delight in this serial. He is the main draw outside of it having the sort of distinction of being the first Marvel film adaptation. Um, but it's it's really the combination of of John English as co-director, the fantastic action staging and sequences, some really nice cliffhangers, some nice uh, sort of uh, villain doomsday uh, devices and bits of technology, incredible effects work once again by the Lidecker brothers who were the in-house special effects department essentially at Republic and were really the best in the industry at all types of effects and the Republic serials at their peak of which Captain America is certainly one featured just about some of the best explosions, miniature work, effects work, optical shots that any Hollywood studio ever produced. So that's another great joy of seeing uh, a, a classic Republic serial. Not only is the action, some of the greatest action ever photographed, but the effects work is sensational. And for my money, I don't think the Lideckers were matched until Derek Meddings in the 60s and 70s and beyond started his incredible work in feature films in terms of miniature effects work and explosions and stuff. That's the level of quality you see from the Lideckers in all the Republic serials. But ultimately, what makes this serial work is having John English as co-director because you've got half of the greatest serial directing team of all time making sure that this serial has enough energy and punch and drive to keep going because you have it basically kind of stretched out over 15 chapters with not a lot of story progression. What they do instead, uh, the whole team of writers, because serials would have a lot of writers, but this one has a substantial amount, um, they kept coming up with basically new sort of developments. So every couple of chapters, the villain is thwarted and that then he tries like a new tack. He's going to go after somebody else or go after a another sort of uh, deadly device to to use against the city. And so that's the sort of story progression we have until the, the villain is finally exposed in the last two to three chapters. So uh, Captain America actually manages to be a far better serial than you expect, and also a far better serial than you think when you start it, because a lot of serials do take a little while to get going, and the opening chapter is obviously longer to set up the story. So usually the opening chapter is closer to 30 minutes, and the other chapters are usually somewhere around 20 minutes but ultimately it is the combination of john english as co-director the incredible villain performance by lionel atwell uh, seeing some lovely familiar faces many character actors appear in this uh, even edward van sloan appears in one chapter so there's a lot of famous faces for classic horror fans but uh, seeing a republic serial is also nice to see a lot of really wonderful, uh, cherished character actor faces pop up in and out of different chapters. Um, but then also the action is absolutely first rate. And it, it just all combines into a really effective serial that is far better than you'd think it'd be, especially due to the fact that the actual story is not super developed outside of the concept and it's also not doing Captain America at all aside from the name and the costume so that's the sort of amusing factor that runs throughout the whole serial is you might expect something about the super soldier serum or Captain America's shield or Bucky the sidekick or you know uh, fighting in World War II something no there's none of that it's just it's Captain America in name and costume only now when it comes to official releases unfortunately like most serials uh, this has not been treated with care or love or respect and unfortunately the only official physical media release is the original nostalgia merchant vhs tape which came on this dual set which i have here 
with nice artwork, uh, very much in the same style as the other Nostalgia Merchant VHS releases of serials they would do. And eventually, this would transition over into the more official uh, Republic Pictures branded uh, VHS and Laserdisc releases. So uh, this kind of started that whole run of the classic Republic serials getting a home video release. And then the rear cover is the same on all of these. But this dates back to Nostalgia Merchant. So that means these are VHS tapes from the late 70s, early 80s. This one in particular is actually dated 1982. So that means this is a much older VHS tape. It is linear mono only. There is no hi-fi. And of course, the quality is limited and a direct print transfer and the actual quality of the prints for each of the chapters can vary. Uh, one of these actually does have the reissue title. A lot of times serials would get cut down or cut into feature versions later on with a different title or reissued under a different title. So it's hard to get the original titles for all the chapters. And one of these has the Return of Captain America uh, reissue title. So even at this point, they were having trouble you know, sourcing original prints and things. Um, I have to say, though, I am always surprised when I look at one of these, the actual quality in spite of it being an early VHS tape from Nostalgia merchant and it is very much going to be dependent on the quality of your vhs playback and your the quality of your vcr and your connection and i would strongly advise watching these on a good crt that has been calibrated as well to get sort of eke out the most quality you can get out of these um with all that being said, I'm I'm always quite surprised how decently these still stack up after all these years. And we do at least get nice labels with an image of Cap himself, and we get a nice custom uh, tape label, which of course for a serial is very important because you've got two different tapes, so you don't want to grab the wrong one. Uh, so you always can glance at the label. This actually manages to be a rather solid viewing experience, of course, with it being a super early VHS tape release from 1982 with linear mono and uh, very much as is print transfers of the time. Um, it's better than I thought it would be much better actually, but it's ridiculous that the first Marvel film adaptation is stuck as a 1982 VHS tape. Uh, this is in terms of official releases. There was eventually a later VHS tape that you'll also see pop up on eBay, but it is from one of the more sort of dubious public domain type uh, labels of that time. And I'm sure the quality is probably not as good as this 1982 Nostalgia Merchant version. And again, uh, the Nostalgia Merchant tapes transitioned over into the more official Republic ones. So uh, they followed the same uh, series type. So if you were trying to collect all of these, you would actually have this Nostalgia Merchant tape as part of the official line of official serial releases. Unfortunately, most serials are usually considered more public domain status. So uh, they usually just fall by the wayside. Uh, Republic is technically under Paramount. And so it would be Paramount who would have to do scans. They have done at at least two scans of uh, two of the greatest Republic serials, which were released on Blu-ray by Kino. There is a Blu-ray of the Adventures of Captain Marvel and Daredevils of the Red Circle. And the quality level of those scans, even though those are not restored prints at all, um, in spite of all the damage and things, you know, it's light years ahead of what we have for all the other serials. And I think film serials are the most poorly treated uh, film genre in all of, of home video and film preservation because people just don't think about them because they're a sort of antiquated form of entertainment. But you would think that of anything, the first Marvel film adaptation, just for historical preservation or Marvel fans being curious, uh, you would think this would at least have an official DVD release like the Columbia Batman serials that Sony did some nice masters of. But unfortunately, this is one of the classic Republic serials that is stuck as VHS only. Now, there is a nicer version done by the Serial Squadron, which is an independent group that does uh, obtain usually six millimeter prints of serials and does their own scans and their own uh, cleanup work and such and is trying to preserve serials and does offer them on uh, DVD-R and even sometimes Blu-ray. So uh, Captain America is one of the titles that they have done a version of. So 
there is that if you wish to have a better version that's not technically an official studio release. And like most serials, there are hundreds of versions floating online captured from dubious various sources. Most of them seem to be not so good captures of this VHS tape. So if you're looking for a serial that only has a VHS release and you see a bunch of YouTube uploads, chances are they're going to be some... Uh, capture of that VHS tape done who knows where and when on what VCR and at what quality level and then these just sort of find their way around the internet and then somebody takes that file and puts a thumbnail on it and uploads it on YouTube so usually when you see this serial on YouTube it's just a various capture of this same Nostalgia Merchant VHS tape and that's unfortunately the status of most Republic serials and most serials in general because only a certain amount of them got even a Laserdisc release, and then even fewer got an official DVD release of any quality, and agonizingly few have a proper Blu-ray release with an HD scan of print materials. So uh, the reason why I also started doing serial reviews, particularly uh, for the Republic classics that are stuck as VHS tapes, is to try to make people more aware of this, uh, because there's no reason why some of the greatest action films ever made need to be stuck as ancient VHS tapes as the only official release, and unfortunately that is is the status of Captain America. So if you want this uh, Republic classic serial, which is also the first Marvel film ever made, you have to track down this 1982 dual VHS release from Nostalgia Merchant. So those are my thoughts on the uh, 1944 Republic serial of Captain America and its one and only physical media official release from the Nostalgia Merchant 1982 VHS tape. This is still a really entertaining serial. I would recommend anyone check it out. Out if you're at least remotely interested in serials, or if you've never seen one before, uh, this one actually is can be a pretty good starting point, and you get the sort of fun factor of it being technically the first Marvel film adaptation, and the amusement of it totally not being Captain America at all, aside from the name and the costume. And if this serial entertains you, and you start researching and 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 seeing how it was made, you might then transition over into looking at other. Serials serials, but uh, I would probably recommend people start with one of the Whitney English serials, uh, but this one could certainly be a, a gateway serial if you've never seen one before. So as always, I hope my babbles about uh, classic superhero characters and the classic majestic artistry of the Republic cliffhanger serial have been at least somewhat fun and informative. I hate to talk about things that have such a horrible preservation history and availability factor, but that's also why I'm doing this series. I've always wanted to look at more of the Republic serials, and someday I hope to, to view all 66 of them, but the preservation status and home video availability is so bad that I really felt the need to start tracking down the best official releases and to try to highlight this wherever possible. So, of course, that means doing VHS reviews for certain titles like Captain America, where this is the best and only physical media release, which, again, is ridiculous. So this is certainly a serial that needs a proper new HD scan. It would probably have to be from Paramount, and there would probably be a lot of rights to be worked out between Paramount, Marvel, and, of course, Disney. Uh, it's possible that this would fall entirely under Disney somehow. I just I don't know how exactly the rights would work out. But, you know, if any serial would be of interest today and uh, get people to watch it and make whoever did the scan money, it would have to be Captain America because it is the first Marvel movie ever made. And in a lot of ways is arguably still one of the best Marvel films because while it has nothing really to do with the character, it is representative of one of the great American cinematic art forms and the art form that is the most undervalued, underrespected, and is so incredibly important to the development of, of cinema, particularly the action film, would not exist without the adventure serials. And chief among those, the Republic serials, most of all, are the pinnacle of the art form of the cliffhanger serial and need to be properly preserved and at least available in modern new scans of the best available sources and not stuck as outdated ancient old VHS tapes from the dawn of home video. So as always, please do keep supporting both studio and boutique labels uh, and serial releases wherever possible by buying films on disc 
even when it means buying old VHS tapes because that's all there is. This not only helps to support uh, and keep film culture alive, but it helps to keep supporting uh, restoration efforts from studios and labels, which hopefully at some point, maybe fingers crossed, might mean uh, more work on classic cliffhanger serials. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.